In this video, I want to talk about the event management starter solution that's part of each installation of FileMaker Pro. And these are all from the brain of Nicholas Hunter, one of the sharper FileMaker developers I've ever met. So I sat down and interviewed Nick and talked about the event management starter solution. And to really take this apart down to each individual capability would take many hours of training. I want to do a quick summary of a couple of the highlights of the event management solution and discuss some key pieces with you, as well as showing you a really good multi-layout PDF append capability that's part of the FileMaker platform. Now, first off, it's important to note that the star solutions that are part of the FileMaker platform are not fundamentally simple solutions. They're fairly complex in nature and are primarily designed to demonstrate the awesome capabilities of the FileMaker platform. Now, if you're a new FileMaker user, tearing these starter solutions apart might be a little bit frustrating because they're really not designed for brand new users to tear apart and to necessarily understand. Some of the technology in some of these starter solutions is quite complex. So the upfront caveat is that FileMaker Star Solutions visually are very appealing and have a really nice user interface, but they also go out of their way to demonstrate some of the awesome capabilities of the FileMaker platform. And frequently doing some of that requires a little bit more in-depth setup or even scripting or programming of the FileMaker solution, which can be over the heads of new or novice FileMaker developers. So just keep that in mind. So let's talk about a couple aspects of this event management solution. First off, the event management solution is a single file solution, but it is composed of a number of different tables, including events, contacts, contributors, tasks, guests, and agenda. Now, of course, you could imagine that events, contacts, and tasks are gonna be some of the cornerstones of this solution. And the relationship graph in and of itself is a whole study in design methodology. So if you want more information about under the hood relational design, I recommend you check out our FileMaker Pro video training course, which is a complete course that covers all this kind of material. Now, continuing our focus on the event management solution, it's important to note that as I create a new event, say we're discussing DevCon 20. 16, it starts off with no contributors, tasks, agenda, or guests. Now, this section up here is the new button segment tool. So if I go to layout mode, I'm going to press command or control L so I can see this. Now, you can see that this is a single object right here, okay? Now, up here in the upper right-hand corner, we have frequently what's called a hamburger menu. And this is an interface construct uh, that's now really easily implemented with the FileMaker 14 platform. And the hamburger menu really is this, where you click on a menu and you see a number of additional, maybe unrelated activities that the user can complete. If I go back to my DevCon 2015 and I take a look and I press guess, you can see another hamburger menu right here. And it's innocuously just called actions with a gear icon on it. And that just means that it contains a whole bunch of different potentially unrelated actions. I can click here once again and see that we can print, send, import, or export. We can do all these types of things right here. So instead of putting buttons across an interface, you can build a hamburger type menu to perform actions or to navigate or to do something for you. Just keep in mind that a hamburger menu is somewhat controversial in the user interface and user experience business. And that being said, that they are frequently overused or can be used by people who don't have a proper view of what an interface should look like. I mean, if you think about it, you could build FM starting point and take all the navigational areas across the top and pack them into a single navigational hamburger menu. The problem with hamburger menus is that they do not fundamentally expose capabilities or navigational options to the user without the user actually clicking on the menu first to explore what that icon or button does for them. So while a hamburger menu can be useful for bringing together a number of buttons to perform tasks 
or to allow for direct navigation to other sections, a lot of people try to shy away from these, if at all possible, when developing a solution. Now, in this situation, I think it's somewhat appropriate because I think that these are all important actions that may need to be activated by a user. And if you actually had to put all these buttons on here, you'd have a whole additional row of action buttons that would just clutter up the interface. So you have to weigh the value of the hamburger menu in terms of cleaning up the interface and overly obscuring fundamental capabilities of your solution. Now, this hamburger menu is actually comprised of a number of different independent buttons. These are not button segments. Now, I was talking to Nick Hunter about this, and fundamentally, the big issue with button segments is that you can identify a specific button segment that might be active during different parts of navigation. For example, in FM Starting Point, we use the new button segment capability as our top row of navigation, and that allows us to easily identify by selecting the specific button segment, which segment should be highlighted and remain highlighted while the user is on that particular layout. Now, of course, the programming for which of the items to be highlighted can be programmatically set up, which is a fancy way of saying that you can set up a calculation to test for a condition. If a certain condition exists, then highlight the button. Now, if we pop open a hamburger menu, we may want certain items hidden or certain items grayed out, etc. And of course, that's what these hidden little indicators are right here. I can bring on my inspector over here and I can click there and I can see the condition in which this button is hidden. So if the platform is web direct, it's hidden. Or if this other field right here is empty, it's going to be hidden as well. So once again, this solution is a great demonstration for thinking about use of hamburger menus and when to hide and expose objects and capabilities. Now, of course, we have our inline field label. And of course, that's easy to set up by clicking on the field and then going up here to the placeholder text. But this is a, essentially an inline label or inline text to describe what's in the field. Of course, this is another area that you have to be careful with. Fundamentally, if you use inline labels, as soon as you actually click into a field, it should be obvious what that field is. So if I say that this is Jeff Benjamin, Jeff Benjamin, well, that's pretty obvious that that's a name. And we have photos here. And then the role is right here. The role, of course, would indicate what they're doing at DevCon Force. So maybe Jeff Benjamin is in charge of Tech Support Central. Now, I could say in charge of, and since I wrote in charge of, it tells us what that is. But if I just said something like lighting, then it wouldn't be very clear as to what Jeff was doing here at the developer conference. And then, of course, that's the same as phone right here. Is this phone going to be the cell phone or the home phone or the office phone? So once again, while the event management solution is a great technology demonstrator, it may not fit your business needs within your organization. You're going to have to look at this. And once again, hamburger menus, right? And also inline field labels or placeholder text can be misused or overused. So building a user interface to get the maximum beneficial user experience is always a balancing act. It takes some experience. And then after you build it, you definitely need to go out and test it on people and try it out and see what they do. Frequently, if you overuse hamburger menus or they're not labeled correctly, people will say, hey, I have no idea how to create a PDF for this event and save it. And of course, that would be buried under here under event report. Now, event report means that the event report can be mailed, made a PDF, or printed. And this one's fairly self-evident, but I've seen a lot of people use hamburger menus and mislabel them or stick some really drastic different things under the hamburger menu. And unless someone goes wandering through the forest, clicking on everything, exploring, they're not going to find what they're looking for. So once again, you want to build an interface that doesn't require an instruction manual. That is self-evident to the users. That's visually appealing. Those are all key cornerstones of a good user interface and, more importantly, a good user experience. Now, one last area I want to talk about here, it's something I haven't really discussed in great detail in videos, 
And that is, of course, generating more complex PDFs. Now, you get into situations where you want to create a PDF that has a cover page that's really cool. And then on page two, it's got a list view that does something. And on page three, it's got another chart that takes up the entire page. And so you've got a mix of lists and then charts and then data entry screens and all this sort of stuff. Well, FileMaker, at least in its current release, only allows a layout to either be a form view, a list view, or a table view. And so mixing all these things together in a single report can be kind of problematic. Well, there's a great demo of this within the event management solution. So what they did is that they created a printable views right here. And this is like the summary of the event report. And then each of these are potential sections within the event report itself, right? So if I drop down to browse mode, I can see the contributor list, etc. And so how do you generate all this into a single print job? Well, I was doing this back with FileMaker 2 in 1990. And the concept here is kind of the same. You identify the individual sections of a report or printout or PDF that you want to create, and you build multiple layouts that allow you to construct it with the idea that you're going to take the output from all these layouts and glue them together. So in the case of a catalog that we had that we were doing actually for Sybase Corporation way back in the day, and it was funny because Sybase was a big database company, and they were using FileMaker internally because it was so flexible and nimble, right? Pretty cool. It's like a, the equivalent statement would be like Oracle using FileMaker internally because it's so seamless and easy to do. Well, in the case of Sybase, we actually had a product catalog and we had a cover page. And then we had numerous product pages with list views, et cetera, et cetera. What I actually programmed a script to do was to go to each layout and print the found set for that layout or print a single record if we needed just a single record. But if it was a list view, we'd print the found set. So because the user would press a single print button and then an entire catalog would come out and the catalog would include a cover page, a table of contacts, the data, and then maybe an index, they assumed that it was a single print command when truly underneath the hood, it was a number of different layouts. And so we would say, go to layout, print this layout, go to this layout, print this layout, go to this layout, print this layout. Well, appending to PDF works the same way. And there's a great demo in here of it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up the script workspace as part of the FileMaker 14 platform and run you through this real quick. There's a script called generate PDF right here. And this script, what it does is actually pops a new window and it starts on the main cover page and it actually outputs to a location called dollar dollar path. Now dollar dollar path was set previous to this script. And the script starts off here at a script called save event report as PDF. Now right here, we set this variable called dollar dollar path. This is the location of where the PDF is going to be saved. It saves it to the document path that's established for the FileMaker Pro client that you're using or FileMaker Go. Now this works with Pro and Go but not WebDirect or with PHP, et cetera. So it takes the event name here, it appends the word PDF, and then it puts a path name all together here in dollar dollar path. And then it runs a script called generate PDF. And these two lines are the critical lines right here. Once we start running the PDF generation, it creates the cover page right here. And as a PDF is the first thing it does. Then going forward, it goes to the related records for contributors, for tasks, for agenda, and it determines if there are any related records. It's very important because outputting zero records to a PDF generally causes the PDF to be deleted. Or in this case, you might create a blank page, and that's no good. So what it does in each situation is it attempts to go to related record or GTRR. Once again, if you have questions about that script step, check out our FileMaker Pro video training course. After attempting to go there, it does a check to see if the error is zero. If the error is zero, then there is no error and it found records. Then it actually runs the same save records as PDF command that we had up here. The difference is the option for append is enabled. So up here on the very first statement, it was to create it. And then every line item below, it's append. Append, 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 append. 
And so it's really educational to go through this script and take a look at what it does. Every time it runs this command, it opens a PDF, it appends additional layouts or pages to the PDF, each layout being at least its own page individually and maybe multiple pages. And then it closed that PDF, so the file is closed and intact. Okay, so that makes sense. And then once it's done, that script finishes. Over here, it runs an event, at least on the Macintosh, which allows it to open the document directly so the PDF appears on screen, which is really cool. But what's interesting about this is the idea of creating a multiple layout PDF where each section of the report is very different. So if I go ahead and run this right now, and I run this, and I say, save as PDF, it runs it, you see the blinking there a little bit, and boom, it makes it visible. So here's the DevCon 2015 report. This is the first layout. Then here's the contributor layout. And then here's the agenda item layout. And then there's the invited layout, the invited guest list. Now, I think there was actually one additional layout or more in here, but it skipped them because there were no related records. So just keep that in mind. Now, of course, it saved it into my personal documents folder on this computer. So I have to open up my hard drive, open my users folder right here, look in documents, make this a little bit bigger, and lo and behold, I have this DevCon 2015 PDF that's created by that FileMaker script itself, constructed with multiple layouts because you can't mix all this data in this format on one layout. It just doesn't work that way. There's a lot of great takeaways and under the hood technology that's part of the event management solution. I've just covered some user interface issues with hamburger menus, as well as the inline field labels, and also point out a really good demo for appending multiple layouts to create a single PDF. Now the PDF we created was in our documents directory, but it could have easily been printed or it could have easily been emailed as well. So if you want to learn more about the FileMaker platform and the kind of capabilities that you saw here, I definitely recommend that you check out our FileMaker Pro video training course at learningfilemaker.com. If you have a specific question about this video, email us at support at rcconsulting.com. So I'm Richard Carlton, and I'll see you next week.